In the last video, I showed you how you can loop through the entities and give each player a random weapon, but it didn't work correctly because it was in the loop function, so it spawns weapons all over again. So today we are going to use two methods to run this code once when the round starts. The first method is to use the game event definitions that is provided by the CS script API, which is very limited compared to all the game events that Counter-Strike 2 has. As you can see, it's a long list, but only these ones are included in the API. So to use these events, we are going to use round start. We can use this function up here on game event. So we can say instance dot on game event. First argument is going to be our event, which is brown start. And this will have an event. The reason I'm providing this event variable is I won't use that actually in this code but if we use this event callback we can access the round number inside the round start event so I can do like I'll copy this one and I will copy also these ones and I'm going to comment these parts we can print the round number, if I remember correctly, yeah. I will set the duration to 5 seconds because this will only execute once. When we were looping, I was keeping this short because it was in a loop, so it wouldn't disappear. But this will execute only one time when the round starts, so I'm setting this to 5. If I run the map, firstly I will build it. As you can see, it's zero. It's zero because it starts from the it starts from the index zero, and disappeared. I will play this round, and after this round ends, it will be one. And as you can see, they have weapons. And they don't spawn all over again. It will spawn one one more time because we didn't check if they already have a weapon before spawning it. And as you can see, it says one on the corner. And it disappears. So this is the first method that you can call scripts based on game events. The second method is to use the entity logic event listener inside the hammer editor. I'm going to copy this part. I will delete this part. Now we will go to hammer editor. We can add the entity class logic event listener in here. At this point, you need to have a name in your point script. I call this aim script. It doesn't matter the name. It's just a placeholder. In here, I will listen for the event round start. As you might remember here. Also, you can check from here. Uh, where is it? Round start, yeah. round start and I will add an output this output is going to be on event fired which will be executed when the event happens and our target entities will be the aim script or whatever you named your own point script entity object and we will call run script input and this will be any parameter I will say on start we won't have any delays. In our code, we are going to use another function called onScriptInput, which is you will have the parameter we set in 
in our outputs on start inside this string then we are going to have another callback and we will paste the same code in here this should also work let's build our map we need to build our map because we added a new entity inside our map so only saving this file isn't enough it's worked as you can see the differences between event listener and the CS script API is that CS script API returns us some information about that event for example player activates returns us user ID player contact connect returns us user ID name and if it's a bot or not these return values but event listener does not return any value it actually returns it's supposed to return an entity IO context which is which is which returns a caller and activator entity but currently it doesn't work as expected it just returns caller as the logic event listener and activator is also logic event listener it does not, it does not provide the entity that it's associated to for example if you call player hurt where is it player hurt i would expect the activator to be the player that got hurt but it doesn't work like that it always returns logic uh, event listener i hope they fix that in the future update or add all of them inside their api so currently we are limited in what um, data we can fetch from the game i hope they fix that uh, that's it for this video i know it's a short video but it's an important concept when creating mods so i wanted to keep it simple if they add like more complex events i will definitely shoot some videos about them uh, thank you for watching